Hello there, I'm uh, Evans, I'm uh, head of the English department and we're going to give you a little um, orientation. Um, it's going to be a bit different this year from other years because everything's going to go online um, and it means you're going to do have, have to do a bit more work online as well. Uh, first of all, congratulations um, and welcome to the department. Um, really hope you have a great time while you're here. Let's make sure you do. Okay then, well, um, you should have had some um, information already. If you haven't, uh, because you couldn't make it to the university, uh, we'll make sure those um, documents are online. Right? But you can see there's the, uh, the student manual, number one. Gakusei Bindan, right? It's quite important. There's also um, information specifically for the English department number two. Um, and also be very important is the um, registration manual, uh, which you have to follow rather carefully because you have to register for your classes. Um, and there's also specific information related to the uh, foreign language center and also for people who want to become teachers in the future, teaching license. Okay then, now basically um, things in university are a bit different from high school um, and it will take a bit of um, getting used to that, um, but we're here to try to get you ready for that. Um, now, one thing you should do is um, check out the various sources of information. Um, that's probably more important than at any time. Uh, there's, you should certainly look at the, uh, the student manual very carefully um, and also the information specifically from the department. Uh, you should look at the um, Gakunai Saito, the um, English department area, um, and also the Gakuma Portaru step area. Um, also, you should check out your mail very frequently, and if you're on campus, you should also look at the um, notice board on a regular basis. And if there's an emergency, we might actually contact you by your personal mail address. Uh, you can see on page seven of the uh, student manual, it gives you information about where to check out the various forms of information. Okay then, now, um, yes, what's different between universities and uh, high schools? Uh, a couple of things. Um, one big thing is the credit system. Uh, you don't really have that in high schools. Uh, the idea is that you take courses in subjects and you receive a credit on that basis if you pass. Um, and then if you keep moving on, eventually you graduate and, um, well, you're a graduate, well done. Uh, but you know, you've know, got to make sure that you do participate in classes, you've got to take part in class and you have to pass, right? So you have to sort of, you know, be responsible and make sure that you do in fact get the credit. Um, and also you should plan, right? Plan the courses you take so that you get the most out of your time in the university. And another thing that's different uh, between high schools and universities is uh, the way that you kind of move up to um, a higher level, I suppose, go up a year. Um, between first and second years, uh, if you want to go up you know, from the first year to the second year, um, there's no particular requirement there. Um, but if you want to go up to the third year, you have to have at least 50 credits um, and then this allows you to, uh, to take or to participate in your ZEMI. So, you know, that's a little bit different. 
and you should be aware that um, over the course of four years, probably four years, however long it takes you to graduate, you are required to get 128 credits altogether. Um, 30 of those uh, come from shared courses. Um, the Kyoyo Kamoku is 16 credits. Academic skills is required, and you'll take that in your first year. Um, and the foreign language courses, there's 12 credits altogether, eight of which you will take in your first year. Uh, so you'll be aware of that. Um, and also PE, physical education, two credits. That's 30 credits altogether. And then the uh, specialized courses from the English department itself uh, will be 98 at least altogether, um, giving you a total of 128 altogether in order to graduate. So you need those credits. And if you look at um, page 48, uh, it'll give you an idea. So this is the student man manual, uh, give you an idea of uh, how you can take those credits in, in the English department. Okay, so it gives you an idea of the breakdown there of um, how you can take these courses over the, uh, the course of four years. Check that out on the student manual. Gives you a bit of a breakdown. I'll go into this in a little bit more detail. As you can see, you can get this information on page 49 to 50 of the, um, the student manual. Um, basically, communication, English skills and advanced English skills, and then you have specialized fields, world English is English linguistics and education, British and American literature and culture. And then you go on to take your seminar, the ZEMI, and write your graduation thesis. Okay then, so let's give you a little bit of a breakdown here. Um, you can see these are the, uh, this is the communication um, grouping communication classes and um, you can find this on page 105 105 of the, um, the student manual so these are communication classes and um, here's the English skills right so um, let's have a quick look at this let's say for example we look at a class for example, reading literature in English. Okay, so that's one class. We could call that one comma. It runs for one semester, right? Either the first semester or the second semester. And then you could say that this one class, if you pass uh, in the one semester, will give you two credits, right? And this uh, class itself would be taken in the first year. It has to be taken in the first year. Um, so you've got all of these classes here, right, which you have to take. Um, and then among these other classes, say for example, English grammar classes there, or the uh, these classes here, oops, Okay, all those classes there. Um, you have to take six credits uh, before you actually graduate. Okay, so that's um, that would be usually most of those classes would be taken in the first year. Uh, quite a lot of them you have to take in your first year. Um, then you can look at the advanced English skills. Advanced English skills, um, also in the communication section. Oops, let's do that there. And you can see you need only six credits from all of these classes, right? So you've got a big, big choice there. Um, but you do have to take at least six 
credits from that section. So you can see, for example, if we look at this, um, what should we look at? Let's say discussion and debate two. Okay, let's discussion and debate two. That's one class, one comma, in one semester. Um, if you pass, you get two units. And normally people would take that in the second or the third year. Okay then, um, and then if you move on, you, know, you get more choice as you go on through the years. Um, a lot of the classes in the first year are compulsory, you have to take them. Then you get more choice as you go on a bit later. Uh, here are the specialized fields. And part of the uh, one section in the se specialized fields is the world Englishes. And again, you can see these are all the classes or the comma which you take for one semester. Um, you'd have two credits each for all of these, each of these classes for one semester. And these are the, the year in which you would normally take those classes. Um, and also specialized fields, you've got English, linguistics and education. Let's just um, focus on my own class. For example, here there's Introduction to English Linguistics 1, which runs for one semester. And you get two credits if you pass. And people would normally take that from the second year. And you have to get 10 credits from this section by the time you graduate. Okay, and there's another one, um, British and American Literature and Culture, page 107. You can see each of these comma one semester, give you two credits, and they're normally taken in well, second and third year, usually, some exceptions. And you can see you need 10 credits altogether. Okay, so you have to think about it a little bit and then by the time you get to your third year once you do have if, as long as you have 50 credits by that stage uh, you'll join a seminar a zemi um, and so let's say for example a seminar in english linguistics that would be one that i do for example that runs for a year and gives you four credits yeah that's one year in this case you get four credits for the year one for each semester i suppose you could say um, and then you take that in your third year here yeah, and then seminar in English, English linguistics 2 again runs for a year it gives you four credits and you take that in your fourth year okay so you have to get uh, eight credits altogether from that section the zemi and then you have four credits so you must do um, a graduation thesis to get four credits for that as well. Okay then, so um, just as a you know, re quick recap, um, you've got to get 128 credits altogether by the time you graduate. Um, 98 of those credits will be from the specialized English classes at least, and um, 30 credits will be basically from outside the English department at least, and there are certain requirements related to that. So let's focus for a moment on Kyoyo Kamoku, which gives you 16 credits. You can see these come from the 30 required classes from outside the English specialized courses. Um, and you need 16 credits from that area. And academic skills is required check that out in the Gakusei Bindan page 91 to 92. And then if we look at the um, other areas in that section outside the English specialized classes, you also need 12 credits in foreign language courses, eight 
of those credits are acquired in the first year. So that is actually quite important for you. Um, and as, as I say, also you need to take two physical education classes. Okay then, so that's the basic um, breakdown. Um, so you might ask yourself, what is a sentaku kamoku? Um, now, of all those classes, you must take at least 22 credits in what is called sentaku kamoku, which is, I don't know, choice, chosen subjects, kind of free choice. Now, how do they work that out? It's a little bit complicated. Um, but if you take, for example, advanced English skills, right? Um, after you've taken six credits, yeah, after you take six credits in um, advanced English skills, um, then it's treated, right? as long as it goes beyond that, it's then treated as sentaku kamoku. Right? So anything over six credits from the advanced English skills section, you remember there's lots of, uh, lots of subjects there, uh, then they count as sentaku kamoku. I don't know how to say this in English, sorry, right? <laughs> but I mean, you know, get the idea, right? Over over six six credits from the advanced English skill section, they then count as sentaku kamoku, right? And similarly with the world Englishes, you remember world Englishes also required 10 credits at least. Anything over that, uh, if you take over 10 credits in the World English section, it counts then as Sentaku Kamoku. Um, English Linguistics and Education, uh, again, over the requirement of 10 credits, you need 10 credits at least, anything over that then counts as Sentaku Kamoku. It's a bit complicated, but you get the idea. Um, also from the British and American Literature and Culture, same thing basically. You require 10 credits, anything over that then counts as sentaku kamoku. Got the idea. Um, also, there's kanlen kamoku, you'll see a, a section there, kanlen kamoku, and any of those, right? Any of those, uh, the, the uh, subjects from that section count as sentaku kamoku. Um, and also, anything taken from the kyotsu senmon, senmon kamoku uh, section. Um, counts as um, counts as sentaku kamoku. I'll show you I'll show you that in a second. Um, that's a kind of interesting section um, and definitely worth uh, looking at. And that will give you all of those, all of those from the kyotsu senmon kamoku. Um, so shared um, specialized subjects. Um, they all count as sentaku kamoku. Um, and if you take Jiu Kamoku, these are subjects from other specified subjects from other departments. Uh, they count as Sentaku Kamoku up to 12 credits. Okay, so it's a little bit slightly complicated, but think about it a little bit, you get the idea. If you're not sure, um, you know, ask on, we're going to have this up on the, uh, on the web class. Um, we're going to have a, a dedicated page for questions and answers in the chat section. So, you know, uh, if you're not sure what it means, just ask. Okay, so if you think you need to get, you know, more Sentaku Kamoku, for example, you might consider the um, Kyotsu Senmon Kamoku, which is a kind of an interesting section, I think. Uh, if you look at it up here, you can see that a lot of these classes um, in this area around here um, are related to computers and information, information processing. So very, very important uh, for your you know, future career, perhaps. I'd certainly consider that. You can see you can take some of these classes from your first year indeed. Um, so definitely worth thinking about. Um, also, some class, some of these classes are related to overseas study and internship, for example. So a very interesting section, I would say. Um, so that's it. That's the um, Sentaku Kamoku gives you an idea of what you can do to get credits in that area. Um, there's also Kanden Kamoku, as I said, um, 
these all count as Sentaku Kamoku and these are kind of related to the English department. Okay, um, so that's the Sentaku Kamoku and also Jiu Kamoku also count. Uh, Jiu Kamoku, what's, what is Jiu Kamoku is basically um, subjects taken in other departments which are open to um, students from other departments. So, you know, if you take a, a, a class from another department which is open to English department students, that, that is then a Jiu Kamoku. Um, and as many as 12 of those will count as Sentaku Kamoku, but don't take too many. You know, because they don't count as in Takukamoku after a while. Okay then, so um, so that's that. Um, if you um, are interested in becoming a teacher, uh, there are special considerations, um, and there are certain classes which you have to take if you want to be a teacher. Uh, you just can't get away with it. So you know, uh, if you do have particular career path in mind. Uh, you should certainly think about um, planning the courses you take and you know, don't forget certain classes are required. So you can see that in the um, handbook for teacher trainers. One more consideration would be that um, there's a limit on the number of classes you're actually allowed to take in one year. Uh, so in other words, we don't want you taking too many classes because you know you might be too tired, you might be falling asleep all the time. <laughs> so in the first in the first semester, uh, sorry, in the first year, you're only allowed to take 56 credits max. Bear that in mind. We don't want you graduating in two years. Um, okay, so basically um, that's pretty much that. Now you've got to, you've got to register. Um, now this year in particular um, with the coronavirus, everything's going online. So it's very important that you do these things very carefully. Um, so, you know, um, the registration manual. Uh, that's going to be extremely important. Uh, you should look at the student manual very carefully. I've been through you know, a fair bit of that now already. Uh, but now you should really go to the, um, re the registration um, for courses manual and look at that very carefully, as well as the um, information we put up from the English department. Um, and you should think about the um, your registration for the um, foreign language courses. Okay, um, and you know you can also think about um, these other courses we've already just been through. Right, so you know just make sure that you think that one through. And you can ask questions if you're on campus. So plan it, you know, plan the, um, the courses you're going to take. As we say, some classes uh, you have to take in your first year or you're strongly advised to take in your first year. Uh, so, may, you know, so be, bear in mind that you might have to uh, work around some of those things. Some classes are um, compulsory and not all of those are from the English department. Academic skills, for example is outside the English department, but is a compulsory class. Um, and you, you actually have the information showing which class you're in. And you have to register, right? this year in particular, you have to register, be very, very careful. But also you have to go to web class and become a member of that class. All right, so you have to register and become a member of the class. You have to register, right? register for the class and you also have to go to the web class and become a member of that class on web class you have to do that this year because otherwise the teacher won't be able to get in touch with you won't know you exist right particularly in the early days and we want to get classes started online as soon as possible okay so you know bear that in mind is two things right two things not one thing two things there's registration right registration for the class but also 
this year, going on to web class and becoming a member of the class you're interested in is very important. So the teacher will know that you're attending the class and that you are participating, can then contact you maybe if they want to do a Zoom class, for example, or set an assignment. Okay, so two things, there's registration and there's web class. Okay, um, these are the classes that you've already been assigned to. All right, you can see that um, these are the ones on the left are actually um, compulsory, right? You have to take, um, you have to take those classes. Um, again, you, know, you, have to, you have to register for these classes, right? You have to register, um, but also you have to go onto web class, you have to do a search and find the class and um, become a member. I'm going to show you how to do that in another video, all right? But it is very important. Okay, so these um, these classes on the left, okay, these are compulsory classes. English grammar is um, not compulsory, but it's strongly advised that you should take it. And you've already been assigned these classes. In fact, all right? You can see your number will be somewhere in these sections notice right got to be careful particularly when you're becoming a member of the web class for example on the way on web class got to be careful that you're actually joining the right class right so it's academic skills either m n o or p um reading literature in english and english phonetics right both of these classes split into four you've been the same class in both of these for both of these classes a b c and d in the same group right and you'd be either a b c or d so be careful about that right you don't want to mess it up and then you've got basic reading and writing and listening and speaking those are two classes um and a b c d or f all right um and you'll be in the same group for both of those classes and your classes have, and your group has also been determined for english grammar Okay, so I'll say that again. It's two things, registration and becoming a member on web class. Becoming a member on web class wasn't so important in the past. It's going to be very important this year. Okay, bear it in mind. There's another video coming. Okay, then. So anyway, um, planning. All right, planning is very important um, because there are certain restrictions. We've just been through that. Um, as far as the um, foreign language classes are concerned, you have to think that about that a little bit, uh, particularly for the future. Uh, for this year, um, the only thing you really have to worry about for this year is that you have to take eight units. Yeah. There's basically four classes um, which give you eight units that have to be taken this year right whichever of these plans you follow right um you still basically have to do the same thing so follow the instructions given to you uh, for the foreign language courses when you register oh and also i should mention that um as far as the teachers training people are concerned, there are certain restrictions that are imposed on them as well. So be careful. Okay then, so um, that's that's pretty much that. Um, got to register. Um, got to look at the um, the manual. The registration manual is going to be very important, of course. Um, but particularly if you're interested in becoming a teacher, if you want to get a teaching license in the future, uh, you've maybe got to plan a little bit more carefully. You should look at the um, teacher's training handbook. Right? You have to follow that quite carefully and make sure you take the right classes. Um, again, check out the um, student manual and the uh, information given by the department 
I'm not sure if that number, the page is right, but anyway, check it out. You'll find it. Um, okay, then. Also, there's um, the recently, you know, um, teachers license for elementary school has become a bit of an issue. Um, so you have a chance to take that as a kind of secondary secondary license. Um, so, you know, bear that in mind. Think about it and plan it, right? Because you have to take take you have to go on a teaching practice. You know this might uh, m might influence the classes you're allowed to take. So you got to kind of think about things a little bit. Okay, so that's basically that. Um, planning, yeah. Um, got to think about it. Um, work things out. Um, and um, you know think about the timing. If you want to take a class and you also want to go overseas to study, if there's a chance of doing that this year, I don't know. Um, but you also want to do teachers training. That those all of those things could be issues. So you kind of have to really think about it and make sure that you know that you don't get overlap in those cases. Okay, then. Well, thank you for attention for your attention. I hope that helps. Um, we'll be putting this um, orientation material up online. Um, it'll have its own dedicated section on the web class. Um, so you can ask questions, we'll get teachers involved in that, we'll get uh, past students involved in that as well. Um, so they can answer any questions that you have. So, you know, get on, get on the, um, the web class, go to the orientation section and check it out. Um, if you do have any questions, you can ask in English or Japanese. It's completely up to you. Yeah, as long as you're, as long as you're comfortable. Okay then. But don't forget, this year's special has to go online. Everything has to go online. We're doing our best to get the information up as much as possible online. Um, it means you've got to listen carefully, play this video a few times, go through it. If you're not sure, ask questions um, on the in the chat area. Um, registration, very, very important. You've got to plan it, you've got to think about it, you've got to make sure you register effectively. Um, the um, registration manual, have a look at that. Dishu um, Toroku Manual, right? Check that out very, very carefully. Um, also, check out web class very, very carefully. It's going to be an orientation section there. Um, and also, if you go into the web class, you can become a member of the class. Uh, I'll give another video on this. Um, and uh, once you become a member of the other class, then the teacher will know that you exist, um, will be able to contact you, and hopefully things will go smoothly. We're doing our best. It's a difficult year this year. Right? We're doing our best. But um, hope you have a great time. At this university, um, yeah, I think it's gonna. I think we'll be better. I think we'll be better as a result of this experience. It's a, it's a tough time, but I think uh, we'll come out of it strong. We're gonna do well. So um, you know, you do your best as well. Good luck. Hope you'll cooperate. We are trying very, very hard to make this work. So hope hope you cooperate as well. Looking forward to seeing seeing you. We will meet again. Okay, right then.